So Mark, what can you tell me about type shortcuts? Type shortcuts are used with templates. Uh, we've got some combo templates that you see over here. In fact, if you've seen some of the other videos, you've seen how quickly we can declare methods, properties, types, that sort of thing. Sure, yeah. In fact, in code, types are everywhere, right? You can't declare a variable without also specifying its type. Same thing holds true for properties. Methods take parameters. Those have types. Methods sometimes return a value which has to be of a type, yep. and classes can inherit from types. So we've got types all over the place. So it makes sense to have template combos, like you see here in this list right here, where we can use those type shortcuts, which I have on this page right here, along with those combos to create properties of any type, to create methods that can return any type mm -hmm. very fast and very easily. Okay. Let me give you an idea of, of how quickly we can build things here. Sure. So C for class, I'm gonna go inside, I wanna create a method that returns a string, so MS, for example, like that. Yeah. Maybe I wanna create a method that returns an integer, so MI like that. We'll just call this method two so we don't have any collision right there. We'll go ahead and give it some default values in here, um, like this so we don't have any errors in the code. And let's say I wanna have a property of type double, so P D like that. As you can see, I'm just using the combo pieces here. I want to create, use P for property, and then I'm using the type shortcuts over here. D for double, I used S for string, and I for integer. Okay. So it's very fast, very efficient for you to declare the code that's in your head. Okay. So this video, we're going to explore some of the common types. We're going to go in through those that you see here, and we're also going to go into the generic types, and we'll look at this character right here and show you how to use that. So just to keep this kind of screen kind of clean, I'm going to come in here and we'll We'll just work inside this my class piece right here. We'll leave it pretty empty for now. Sure. So we've got these common types and you've probably seen these in the other videos. So if I want to create a, a method that returns an integer, you've seen that it's MI. MS method returns a string. MB is a method that returns a Boolean like that. Yeah. MBY is a method that returns a byte. Let's switch up and use a different combo. Instead of using the letter M, let's use V for variable. And let's come in here and we'll show you the different places where that works as well. So let's go back to our type shortcuts, see where we are on that list. G for GUID. So we'll type in MG, method that returns a GUID. We'll call it get GUID, like that. And now we're gonna use the V variable one, right? Yeah. So we'll use V here, and maybe we'll pass in I for an ID. So nice and simple. Uh, an integer ID, yeah. Right, I'm just gonna hit the space bar so I can move over to the side here and we'll use V again and let's say we'll bring in uh, the next one on our list which is an F for float. So type in VF like that and we'll call this weight for example. And then I'll hit the space bar and I'll type in VD for double. Very nice. And there you go and we'll call this height for example. So this specific implementation of the, the variable, the V expansion, knows to keep offering you further and further options. Exactly, and it will keep adding commas for me automatically. All I have to do is just get a space to move off to the outside of it. Notice I'm still in that orange box, which means I'm in my, my text field. Sure. And so let's see, we're now into decimal now. So V, D, E, and we can have multi letters for those common types. So here, D, E for decimal. Yep. So I'll do that, we'll call it price, for example. And when I'm done, I can just hit enter. And now I'm still I'm still at the very end. I could, I could still do a space and keep going, or I could hit enter and get inside the method. Let's go ahead and get inside the method and we'll keep going down here. So we use DE for decimal. Let's use D8 for date time. Okay. So I want to create a new variable of type date time. I'll type in V D8 like that and we'll just call it date. So this time we've got a semicolon at the end because it's understood that we're declaring a variable inside the method body. This is different from declaring a parameter inside of the signature where, again, we had the option to make more and more and more, which is still could. We could go to a new line and make another one. But the distinction of that extra piece of syntax saving you just a couple of extra seconds, maybe. That's right. Save you keys everywhere we can. Let's go up here and type in VTS for a time span. And notice we get an appropriate expansion here as well. And we'll call this duration, for example. Hit enter, get outside. So it's very, very fast to get these common types that we use all the time. Let's come over to combos. We're gonna use the letter N for creating new initialized instances. And we'll work with that combo for a little bit. And let's start looking at generics as well. Yeah, okay, I can imagine generics are a lot more complicated because obviously there's an infinite list of types that each one of those could be of. Yes, that's correct. Let's start with the list, the generic list, and let's create a new initialized. In fact, actually, let me back up because I want to show you the end template first. That's a, it's just so it very quickly so you see what's going on. If I type in N for new initialized instance, followed by letter S for string, it gives me my variable and it gives me a place to assign it a value, whatever that value is going to be. Sure. So that's what N does. So now let's look at generics. So N followed by an L for a list, and every generic has a dot after it. 
Okay. So those are four of the common generics that we have out here. There are actually more, and I'll show you how to find the full list of these. With a list, we need to know what the list is of. Is it of ints? Is it of strings? That sort of thing. Huh. So if I want a new list of ints, I'm going to type in nl.i, like that. And there you can see it's just declared a new list of integers for me. Okay, cool. I'll call this known ints, known IDs maybe. Hit enter. I can specify any parameters or just hit enter again and get outside. Yep. To get a dictionary, I will type in nd dot, and a dictionary accepts two different parameters. So we'll use the first one, let's say i for integer. This is the key, the index into it, a comma, and then the type that I want to index. In this case, we'll say strings. So a new dictionary that's indexed by ints and gives me strings is going to look like that. Sure. nd dot i comma s, space bar, and it gives me all of that you can see is declared for me. So in the same way as people might literally be saying to themselves, okay, as I'm typing the I for variable of type integer and VS for variable of type string, when we go into the sort of the realm of generics, we might literally pronounce the period, the dot symbol as of. So list of integers, L dot I. Dictionary of string comma string would be S comma S. And it all just naturally falls out of the brain almost. Yes, exactly. And it, it's not just with the letter N. I can use the V again, right? I can say if I want a variable that's a list of strings. Sure. And presumably we can extend this and we can have a method that returns a dictionary of string, comma, data set. Presumably we can do that. Yes, we can. So let's do that. We don't see data set over here, but we can guess at what its abbreviation might be. So it was a, a method that returned a dictionary. Okay, so MD. Of string indexed data sets. Like that yeah. is what we would do. So method that returns a, a dictionary of string indexed data sets. That sounds right. Yeah. Hey, there we go. And that's what it looks like right there. And we'll just say get data sets is what we would call that. Cool. So not too hard, oh. right? And you're saving a lot of time in terms of... Well, there was maybe five, six keystrokes in there. Nothing more than that, surely. That's right. Not too bad. And it's easy to figure all of this out, right? The abbreviations for the common types, the, you're seeing a subset of them here, but the abbreviations in general will make sense. You can see as you go down here, right? We've got D for double. We've got another type that starts with D that's a common one. So we're using DE here and we have a date time and we're using D8 for date time. Just give you that phonetic start right there. Date. Very nice. Uh, the slash gives you what's on the clipboard. So I might take like, for example, my class and I might want to have a, a class that descends from my class. So I'll type in C and then the slash. So C for class and then the slash key. Very nice. And over on the combos page, you can see the C template is one of the combos, right? Yep. So I can do that. And then I can now say my super class or my whatever I want to call this here. My super class. Sure. Well, that's definitely going to save you time. So, Mark, we've seen a whole bunch of combos and, and how they expand within classes. Um, do, do they work in structs, maybe interfaces as well? They do. It's the same inside of a struct and inside of an interface. Here, I'll just create an interface for you very quickly here. Well, that was quick. <laughs> and we'll, let's say we want a method that returns a list of strings. Sure. It's just ml.s. Like yeah. that. And there it is. Ah, but it's been clever enough to notice that in an interface, we don't have a body. That's right. Okay. Same thing with properties. If I want to have a property that returns a dictionary of int indexed strings, it looks like that. Property that returns a dictionary of integer indexed strings. Sure. It looks like that. So that's fantastic. It means we don't have to learn a second set of shortcuts for interfaces or presumably structs either. That's right. And you're saving a lot of keystrokes. And that's how these type shortcuts really help you. Yeah, absolutely. So, Mark, we see a list over there on the right of, of maybe, what was it, 10 different uh, type shortcuts. Presumably, we have more of these that maybe aren't in that list. So, Rory, if you Google or Bing Code Rush Cheat Sheet, you'll come to a link that shows you on page two many of the type shortcuts that we ship with Code Rush. Over here on the left, you can see the combo templates that are all listed here. Yeah. Yeah. And in the teal background tables, you can see grouped by category by namespace, the different shortcuts we have. So here you see for data row, it's DR, for example, or for file web request, it's FWQ. Yeah, I can see a bunch of uh, SQL client related ones there. That's very useful for some people. And also some WPF examples. Exactly. So you see a number of the common types that are there. Now, you can also see the full list. If you go into Code Rush, you choose Code Templates here. This is going to bring up the Options page. It's going to select the Templates page. But if you go up one here and choose Dynamic Lists, 
in C sharp types here, we just have one here, f for system.single, because in C sharp, system.single is represented by the float primitive. Uh -huh. However, if we move to neutral, which makes sense because these types are common to the core and .NET Core, and they apply to all languages, sure. you can see where we keep most of the types. So for example, here under system types, you can see what the list of the shortcuts are that are here. So it's a simple mapping from short key phrase, couple of characters, to a fully qualified .NET type. Exactly. So here SB gives me a string builder. Yep. For example, and SW gives me a stream writer. SR gives me a stream reader. So you can see the full list here. It's not only in this list. It's in any of these lists that have the word type right here. Sure. So for example, we can go to system drawing types. We can look at these types that are here. We can look at SharePoint types as well. So does that mean that we can construct our own lists? It does. So let's do that, for example, right now. Let's see what I have in here. I think I have, uh, let me close this for a second and let's scroll down. Uh, I created a seat position earlier, the seat position struct earlier, right? Yep. Let's create a new dynamic list entry for that. So we'll bring up the options page and we're gonna go switch over to the neutral language. We'll create a new list. We'll call it my list. The variable name will be the word type because this is a type shortcut that we're creating. So this is to work with any of those templates that use this type concept. Right, I can add a comment. I can add a context if I want as well. For example, to have these set of shortcuts only be valid when a particular DLL is loaded or a project is open, for example. Okay, so, so to show the example back there that presumably the SharePoint types list has a context that says this DLL must be in place. And that means that if, I, if I'm not working on a SharePoint project and I don't have that reference, that there won't be any expansions that I don't expect to happen. Exactly. So you can specify an optional context. You also want to check this box right here to say this list holds .NET types. Okay. You can also create lists of things that are used in combos with templates that do not hold .NET types. But if this checkbox is selected, the template, when it expands, will automatically add the appropriate imports or using clause up at the top of the file if needed so that your type is going to be in scope when it's referenced by the code generated by the template. Good stuff. Okay. Yep. So now down here, we'll type in uh, SP for seat position. And over here in the value, we'll specify seat position. And you can do any number of types you want in there. So you could maybe TK for ticket was the other one that we had. Exactly. And that becomes the, literally the last thing we'd need then for any given entry. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll do TK and we'll say uh, ticket like that. And so for both of these, we're going to need the full path to these. And we'll click OK. And now if we want to have a property of type ticket, we just type in PTK like that. Nice. So we basically have just given ourselves the ability to expand all of the combo templates to use any of the types that we have ourselves designed. Correct. And, and just to extend this, if I want to create a method that returns a seat position, I type in MSP like that. Let me go back there. Right. I'm just using that SP together with one of the combo templates that you see here. So code rush shipping with excellent combo templates out of the box but the ones that will grow with you as your code base grows. Exactly. And they work with all of them, right? So if I want to create a new initialized seat position, I just type in NSP like this. And there it's going to give me a new seat position like that. Yeah. Right. Or if I want to create a variable of type seat position, I can do that. Or if I want up here, a variable of type seat position, I can do it here. Excellent. And I can call this like seat one and then maybe space and type in VSP again. Get a second one right there, call it C2, right? See how fast this is to do this. It's pretty fast. An auto implemented yeah. property of type ticket, ATK, like that, right? All of this stuff is now fast and easy once we put those in. Great stuff.